far. I think almost there always have issues trying to get this going, uh, but there we go. All right, we're on. And welcome to episode three, uh, sorry, episode two of the History Happy Hour. I am Alf Lamont. Um, with us is, I mean, what can I say about our group today? <laughs> We've been inside a long time. <laughs> All right. Well, why don't we start with you, Dan? What the hell's going on? I'm just, this is, I just got back from the store. <laughs> so this is what I wear outside. No, it's all a theme that goes with what we're talking about today. It's all fun plague stuff. Got it. All fun plague stuff. All right. Um, and we'll go into it all a little later. Cool. Okay. Let's let's go into it all a little bit later. Um, but uh, also with us, the the statuary behind us, um, the 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 person who will be who will be providing color commentary and fact checking for us from this point forward. Fingers crossed. Is Miss Amanda Brass. Hello, um, thank you so much for having me on. <laughs> well, you know, it, it's 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 our pleasure, and also this illustrious uh, one episode in uh, podcast, uh, you know, or video cast, or whatever it is, uh, you know, we needed you, Brassy. Uh, it's fresh. As, it's good. I love it. It is. Oh. It is. It is fresh, and it is good, and and also just uh, two heavyweight guys uh, 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 wagging their fingers at each other, chuckling about things, just wasn't cutting it. Right. So we, we, we needed we needed you um, and Brassy, um, the the image uh, in the uh, that's above me right there. Yes. Um, that is from the Philosophical Research Society. And I'm going to actually show another image here. Um, and that's the Philosophical Research Society. And the reason you're a fact checker and the reason that you're on it is because you are a librarian and a worker and a person there. Can you tell us a little bit about PRS? Well, yes, I, I, I joined the crew um, January of 2019. I was just a, a docent in their art gallery for a few years. Um, and I attended some of their lectures, and it's it's basically their focus is is the center point of the branch of philosophy, which sh should always be exercised by everyone in all in all um, capacities. Philosophy, also religion, just the study of it. We're not proponents of any one belief. We believe in looking at all of it and finding what works. And then the third branch is. Uh, science, which is extremely crucial these days uh, in the world of misinformation. Science can be an anchor to your path going forward. So at the center of this intersection of philosophy, of religion, and science, you have PRS, also known as Philosophical Research Society, founded in 1934. Awesome. Thank you, Brassy. Sure. And I'm 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 extremely excited about having you on board just because you have access to all of these amazing and unique texts at PRS and, and yeah. you provide a very, very fun insight into what is a very straightforward uh, way that, that Dan and I uh, kind of approach things. So so um you can you can I'm sure with all of the stuff at the PRS and and from all of the reading and learning you've done. Uh, yeah. You add a magical, mystical element to all of this. Um, and yeah. I don't mean that in a derogatory term. I mean no. that in, in a really fun and valid way that uh, that I think is going to is gonna come in handy um, as we tackle a lot of these weird things in, uh, in history. Uh, so really excited to have you, Brass. Thank you. Awesome. Okay. So this is the three of us. As it stands right now, <laughs> um, let's see which 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 configuration do we like the best? Are we liking this one? How about how about this one? Mm. Mm. All right, let's go for this right now. All right. Okay. Um, so um, mm, no, yeah, I think I like the other one better. Um, this one. Okay. So um, so I wanted to like Dan and I have been kind of going back and forth a little bit. And um, 
and we talked, Dan was very insistent that we should do plagues because plagues are a big moment in, in societies and in histories. And I was like, no, we can't do plagues, plural. We got to focus on this first one because we're still dealing with a lot of like the, 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 um, the historical trauma from, from this plague, right? And the Black Death is, is known, the, the bubonic plague, the Black Death, and we can go into a little bit about like, like the differences and some, some thoughts around that, but the Black Death is, is 1347 to 1353, right? And so that's a six year span Right, we're we're all complaining about being indoors for how long has it been now? I think most of us it's been uh, at least a month. A month, um, yeah. Yeah, and and um, and here we're talking about a six-year plague um, that that killed millions. I think over two million people. Um, and I think one of the interesting things that I wanted to kind of tie back is that that um, a lot of our thinking about uh, pestilence and plague and and pandemics um, was shaped from this moment in 1347, um, and I think nothing really shows like specifically how how that happened uh, and how that worked. Then then the fact that the Church of the Holy Sepulcher um, was recently closed. Um, and 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 Dan, you wanna either of you wanna wanna kind of elaborate on what the Church of the Holy Sepulchre is? Oh, run with it, Dan. Knock it out. No, actually, you should run with it. I ha I have to Google it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Uh, I, I just know they have great. Everyone could videos. be wrong. This is where where Brass is is quickly run, googling. Run. I believe. Um, it, I'm not gonna use my notes. Um, I believe the Church of the Holy Sepulcher is, in fact, the the place where where uh, allegedly Christ's body was was stored for three days while uh, after which he rose up. Oh, right. Okay. Oh, right. And so it's a holy spot for basically all of Christianity, and that space is shared by by Coptic uh, Orthodox, um, yeah. uh, Armenian Orthodox, Greek Orthodox, Catholic, like you name it, right? Like all of the major, like 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 creepy old denominations of, of Christianity uh, ha are, are, yeah, they're creepy, whatever, man. Like, I'm sorry, like, like. I think you, it's okay for them to own that creepiness. Yeah. It's, and, how, and, it's and, why they're so effective. Right, exactly. And, 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 and literally, can you say Coptic Orthodox and not be a little bit like, Ooh. Oh no, I cringe when I say it. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's like calling something Byzantine. Right, right. Yeah. So, so okay. So, I, I did want to show uh, a little bit of uh, of an awesome video uh, okay. from the uh, fr of monks fighting right. inside the Holy Sepulchre. Right. Okay. So, fights break out between monks inside the church that houses the tomb of Christ um, all the time because it's such a sensitive spot. Look at that guy just got knocked to the floor. Um, and so, um, I think I think that just kind of helps show. Uh, just how important that place is, and for the first time since the uh, since the um, the Black Death, which was uh, the first time since 1349, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre has been shut down. Wow! Right? And and I see that as a direct connection from that mm -hmm. moment of contagion to this moment of contagion, and and the severity of of the severity of, of how interconnected we all are, um, and 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 this moment in history, um, and how and how our our relation to that moment in in thirteen forty seven, like like that's so long ago, um, is 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 coming back to affect how we're thinking. Um, so uh, I did want to take a moment um, because because Dan was very insistent that plagues overall are important and that the bubonic plague and the black death slash black death um are 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 cool but there there's also important things to note but i wanted to give dan a moment to 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 talk about some um some other plagues prior to the bubonic plague to the black death and how that kind of set up uh some of the situations that uh that we're dealing with what that we that they dealt with uh when the black death came to europe right so uh 
plagues as as you talked about and as we'll talk about later um are huge moments in human history and human societies and they 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 change the course of societies and civilizations uh just like wars and they usually do a good job at showing up at the same time wars and they sure do uh so uh some of the big ones uh i've got this little document here of the six of the most important uh plagues in history <clears throat> all right the plague of athens in 430 bc this is the first recorded pandemic um okay. they're not overly sure or at least from this document uh what it was um the uh it occurred during the peloponnesian war uh and the symptoms of whatever it was sound really awesome um <laughs> included fever thirst bloody throat and tongue red skin and lesions oh. probably was typhoid but they're not over they're not sure um let's see i'm not going to go through all six uh, another big one here, 541 AD, uh, the plague of Justinian in the Byzantine Empire. Sure, and that's that's a, that's a big one, right? Like, the right. that's the first bubonic plague show up. Got it. Really. And and that's the Byzantine Empire, which is which is as far east as you get for Christendom and European history. Right. 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 Um, and then in the 11th century, this is one we didn't talk about. This one's a this one's a good one. Leprosy. Oh. Um, uh, Leprosy. Sure. Uh, in Europe, in in Europe, uh, the black oh, death, of course. Mm -hmm. um, a huge one that uh, we'll be addressing multiple times throughout different episodes of this. Uh, 1492, the beginning of the Columbian Exchange and the European settlements of America. Yeah, jumping ahead. And stop it! You're jumping ahead. <laughs> We, no, I said it'll come back up. I stopped right, right there. All right, all right, all right, all right. Uh, 1665, Great Plague of London. Fun one. Um, the first, the first cholera e epidemic in 1817. Uh, let's see. 1889, the the Russian flu. Uh, 1918, the most recent visitation uh, of the. Uh, well, it's called the Spanish flu, but it might have come from Kansas. Um, <laughs> oh, no, that's. Oh. Yeah, go facts. for it. Facts. No, I just right? say that's facts. That's, that's facts. Fact. But they blamed it on. They call it Spanish in order to kind of make it feel like it was an outside source that had come to poison us. But we we conquered it. <laughs> right. Well, the, and there was a thing. Apparently, the, I guess in Spain, they called it like the Milan soldier or or. They had another term for somebody it, else. A lot of finger pointing going on in the naming of these things. I see. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I, the the Russian one, I think, is 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 interesting. I wonder how the Russians felt about that. Um, I I want to I want to I don't want to dwell too much on on the Spanish influenza because I think that that deserves its own like little moment. I mean, we right. I don't know if any of you watched Downton Abbey, but I know oh, that yeah. Spanish, Spanish influenza took a toll on me. Um, uh, but um. I think I think that it's the um, I think going back to leprosy it might be like worth a little a little exploration because leprosy in the way it's been dealt in in film and in and in folklore like leprosy is super important for Christianity like like mm -hmm. you love a good leper story in, in Christianity right like like Jesus healing the lepers like you don't want to touch those people and then he touches them and he heals them right and then um and then you've got like all of these great Charlton Heston movies where they are dying of the plague right and that's that's them referencing um um uh you know um what do you call it? Uh, um, leprosy. Then you've got like the the what was that movie with Orlando Bloom, um, uh, where he's a like crusader? Kingdom of Heaven. Kingdom of Heaven, right? And one of the kings there is wearing a mask because he's dying of leprosy. And right. then in Braveheart, the dad is dying right. of leprosy. Oh, and the, right. Yeah, Robert the Bruce's dad is like his face is falling off of, of leprosy. I think I think leprosy has captured uh, the imagination uh, in a way that that bubonic plague hasn't, right? Not a lot of big plague movies. Right. Not a lot of big black death right. movies, right? 
like the visuals the probably. Scene. Sorry, the visuals probably. Yeah. I imagine so. Yeah. And I think I think so. So let's talk a little bit about those those, those visuals. No, let's not talk about the visuals yet. <laughs> Why don't you talk about what you're drinking, for Christ's sake? Oh, you know what? I, I forgot my drink. Oh, all right. What are you drinking, Dan? Okay, I'm drinking today, and it's got reference. I'm drinking Doppelbach beer. Ooh. Oh. Uh, and it's got a reference. Uh, it'll come up later as a reference today. It's also because, you know, it's Good Friday and Holy Saturday, and it's supposed to be on a fast if you're a Christian. And this oh. is really liquid bread. This is what monks drank. During Lent and 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 well, let's be honest, they drink it all the time. But. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, so okay, let's let's, uh, let's jump. We talked. To, I think I think it's good that we talked a little bit about like the origins of uh, of plague and the idea that um, that um, you know we're talking right now about you know. Um, um, COVID-19, which originated uh, in Wuhan in China, um, and how, how that's been politicized and how, how folks want to call it, uh, you know, the Chinese virus, uh, the Wuhan virus, which we know is a terrible way of approaching uh, pandemics because uh, it, it, it doesn't care, you know, the, the, it doesn't care where it came from. So, um, but what's interesting, and I think, I think uh, it bears noting is that, that, um, uh, the story of the Black Death um, actually does start in the East and possibly in, in, in China as well. It's documented, the earliest documentations of, of the bubonic plague, uh, the Black Death, um, were from the Mongol Empire. And the Mongols are awesome, and we will definitely talk a lot about them. Um, but they had a huge empire, right? Like it, like like their influence spread basically from from China all the way across the steppes into uh, into parts of Europe. Um, and so, what happened there is that um, is that as trade opened up through through the Silk Road and through all of that, uh, when the plague started uh, somewhere along the steppes, uh, it, it basically started, I believe, in the middle. And then spread to China first because because there was more traffic going into China at that point, um, and then and then from the steppes, and then got taken in the other direction uh, towards uh, towards Europe. Um, anyone want to add to that? Uh, no, that sounds that sounds that's that sounds feasible, right? Yeah, sounds feasible. I, yes, and, and, we can, <laughs> and we can we can also take uh, we can also take this moment to to uh, indemnify ourselves that none of us are professional historians. Uh, oh. Dan has a degree in, in Dan has a degree. Dan has a degree in history. Uh, Brass works, uh, works at a, uh, at a library, but none of us have these, these facts at the tips of our fingers. And we welcome uh, people proving us wrong and commenting and saying, you guys are idiots. Uh, and we fully acknowledge there's a, there's a high likelihood that that's true. Um, oh yeah. Agreed. That being said, that's my theory that that the plague started in the steps and spread uh, in two directions. Um, uh, so I think one of the most interesting, like one of the most interesting um, stories around uh, around the plague in in in, um, in the Middle East uh, is the story of um, of the king of Tharsis. I believe Tharsis is Syria. Maybe this is a, a good moment to to kind of look that up. I am. Um, Awesome, um, but um, it said that the the king of Tharsis, upon seeing so sudden and unheard of death among his subject, decided that he was going to convert, and he was gonna uh, he was gonna set up uh, with a bunch of nobles to go meet the pope, and he said, "I'm going to be baptized a Christian. This is God's vengeance." Um, and uh, and and I'm gonna I'm converting right so like like immediate desperation in the Middle East abandonment of all norms at the at the uh, at the in the face of this incredible amount of death it should give you a it should give you pause uh, about how severe this was and how quickly the fact that one of the the kings in the Middle East was like. I'm leaving and I'm going to convert. Um, and, and basically what happened is he's like, I'm out of here. 
he walked, uh, the, he, he, he basically started heading towards Rome uh, for, um, uh, I think it says uh, 20 days journey. So he left for 20 days. And as he's traveling, he's seeing that a bunch of Christians also have the plague. And then he's like, well, okay, that's not gonna protect me. So he turned around and went back, right? And, and who knows what happened to the, to the good king of, uh, of, of Tharsis. But I think, I think it, it shows, uh, A, that it, it started hitting in the Middle East um, pretty early on. Uh, I think there were plagues in Egypt. Um, but the, the flashpoint for Europe um, then came, um, then came at, at the, um, in the Crimea, right? And I think the Crimea, Crimea and Bosporus um, are, are kind of these, these, these Bosporus being uh, uh, where, where um, Istanbul, Constantinople, Byzantium uh, is. Uh, and the Crimea, which, is a, which was in Ukraine, is now Russia, very, very sketchy. Um, but, uh, but it basically ships from the Crimea that, that carried folks from the Silk Road, from, from the Mongol Empire, uh, set sail. Uh, and Crimea just historically is one of these flashpoints. Bosporus is another one of these flashpoints. Brassy, you were you, we were joking about this earlier. Um, and then it went to a um, it went to uh, it, it went from there to uh, Sicily, right? And that's where the ships went. And and Sicily is is it, it, for practical purposes the part part of the uh of the mainland of of the european mainland um so i think maybe we should uh we should talk a little bit about like the situation in europe uh at the oh actually i skipped something really important um the the Mong the 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 mythology around the the plague bodies on in the siege of uh what was it um siege of kaffa right Biological germ warfare. You want to take this, Dan? Yeah. So apparently, uh, the siege of Kaffa, uh, which is where 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 did we find out? I, I, is it in, did we look? I don't know. I don't know where it's at. Uh, anyway, the siege. They uh, the, the the Mongols were taking their plague dead and launching them in catapults or trebuchets or whatever they had into the city as germ warfare and it was just like a two for one, right? Germ warfare and then they didn't have to bury the dead. So really kept things cleaned up, but God, really cruel. That's a rough one. Yeah, and, and, and plague basically devastated the Mongolian ranks and made them mm -hmm. back off of that city. But by that point, that had been transmitted to that city. And, I, and it could be that, 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 uh, that Kaffa was in the Crimea. Crimea. It could be that that's that's the that's the city, and that's why uh, all of this this kind of mythology around where what the the focal point is. But I believe there is also like like it is factual that um, that uh, that Crimean ships, death ships, right, uh, sailed into the harbor in in Sicily, and that's kind of where we 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 saw the explosion. Um, so let's uh, let's talk a little bit about like the world of the Middle Ages, right before uh, the plague, right? Because the the, the three hundred years uh, uh, prior to the uh, to thirteen forty seven, right? Like like um, I would say basically like like the eleven hundreds to the to the to, to the 1300s were, were, were two centuries of relative right. ability for Europe. Right. We'll say 1066. Why? Because it's the invasion, the Battle of Hastings and the invasion of England by the Normans and the last Viking raid. Got it. Right, right, right. And that's, ah. that's, that's, that's good. That's a good, that's a good date. Right. So, so prior to that was the dark ages. Right. Right. And and the the Dark Ages was, was basically the, the the remnants of um, which you know there's the, the Dark Ages is, is kind of a 
a, a crappy way of, of commenting on it because it's it's purely a European phenomenon. There was amazing right. stuff going on elsewhere. But um but um and the sun did shine. Apparently. Yes. <laughs> but didn't the sun shine less? Wasn't there like a mini ice age during that time? Oh, I don't know. Yeah. I know there's another one we're gonna talk about later. Okay. Ooh. Right. Um, so um so basically, um the 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 the, the, the Vikings stopped for a second. And and they solidified their power in different places, and that's where you see, that's where you see kingdoms sort of uh, having a moment to breathe and creating uh, creating some stability. And st Middle Ages stability is not is not real like it's not real stable, right? Like like not 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 what we understand as stability right now. It, it, stability is a romantic term for what you're talking about. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's it's a relative term. Like you don't have hordes of you know tribes and Germanic tribes like storming you or Norsemen storming you on a monthly basis. It's more like every five or six years, <laughs> right? And and really, it's not even the tribes, right? It's just like warlords now vying for power. But stability starts to return. Right. It's now it's now like the king or the lord who is coming in and stealing all your things. And right. but at least there's a hierarchy to it, right? Right. Yeah. Right. There's there's a form of government. It's called feudalism. Exactly. And 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 so and not just that though, like there's there's other pieces that are starting to kind of fall into place. Right. Um, like the church is is consolidating right. its power, right? And 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 you're seeing at this point in time, um, like like the church sort of start to flex, and and during this time, you see you see the, that uh, the monasteries, which had been like little 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 islands, start to kind of expand their power into into the area surrounding it, so that the church had its power. You had you had basically um, two three hundred years of 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 what would become the status quo. Um, even right. even past this moment, but this 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 moment that we're we're talking about right now, the the Black Death was like the most disruptive moment um, of of them all. So uh, so yeah, so somewhat like like stuff is going okay, but then basically at at thirteen hundred. Uh, because you know we can't have nice things, and again, nice things like like high mortality, um, uh, you know, constant instability, uh, death at the hands of of, of violence and and and, uh, and illness. All of these things exist, but they exist at a lesser place they, than they did uh, two hundred years back, right? And so so everybody's feeling kind of groovy about their stuff, and you're seeing like the beginnings of like musical traditions and uh, and written poetry and, right. and what, what Kenneth Clark would refer to as civilization, right? And and and, <laughs> and and civilization is 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 big and happy, and and stuff is starting to happen uh, in the Middle Ages, and then this comes in, you know, the age of the troubadours. You have uh, you have just all sorts of incredible things, and then all of that moment gets disrupted, but but things were starting to fall apart prior to this, which I think is interesting, right? Um, there, there yeah. Were, do you, do you want to elaborate on that? Or? Well, I mean, just on the church side, and um, as I said, not a medieval historian by any stretch of the imagination, but you already have like a lot of heresies sort of starting. Um, well, there's one particular heresy in uh, Hungary, and I think the Czech, was there one in the Czech, uh, what's now the Czech Republic, Bohemia at that time? Um, so you have like heresies starting. You, th there's, there's, um, there's fissures forming, right, in, the, in, the, in society. Um, but then you also have consolidations of power. Uh, you have the very beginnings of France and England, you know, which expand out. Um, Spain, right? You have you have sort of this breaking of power and yet consolidation of power. Yeah, and, and starting and to, to tear down. 
and, and I, would world. Say, I would say that the fissures were were. I mean, I, I almost feel like the the political and geopolitical like 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 strife, like the the perma war between France and England, right? Uh, which mm -hmm. is with us during this time and will continue, right? Like all of those things, um, all of those things kind of um, they they existed, but I feel like like you hit on on those cultural fissures a little bit. By by talking about the, the the heresies, right? And I feel like heresies are 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 like uh, like subgenres, right? Of certain things, like like they're like like heresies are are just these moments where someone takes a really wild spin on something, right? And and kind of goes off and and I mean there were many cults. I think is a good way of of, of sort of describing it, right? Um, yeah, I think you could call them that. <clears throat> I also I also I think that a lot of heresies have the beginnings and in inklings of nationalism behind them, especially if you're have foreign foreign rulers over you. So you have that coming in as well. Yeah, and and here's something interesting. So so the Cathars, um, which are are a uh, were a an interesting um, her heretical group, right? And they were. Um, um, they were just, they were into no possessions and very, very like, 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 um, they, they, as, they sounds like they were as beats. They were as, as yeah, as exactly, exactly. And that, and, and they had like a lot of like, like, um, uh, and, and that's, I think this is, this is what you're talking about Bulgarian, but, um, but basically they, they, they were a, a weird sect of Christianity that, that the church was just like, whoa. Like they, it just appealed to everyone to kind of shed their uh, their their worldly possessions and 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 live simply and uh, and they were also like really aggro about it, right? Like let's not let's not let's not give them too much credit, but but um, but you know they believed that salvation came from shedding all of these these things and and that that was like you said like like it had it had these cultural roots and and this attempt at free. Freeing yourself from from the from the um, from the weight of the church um, and putting your own spin on it, your own cultural spin on it. So so yeah. So the world as it stands right now, like as as the bubonic plague, as the Black Death, and by the way, like there is there's there's some arguments about whether or not uh, the plague was the bubonic plague. Uh, mm -hmm. The Black Death was the bubonic plague. Nice. Yes. Um, do you want to you want to you want to kind of spin on that, Dan? I had never heard of that until just a, like a week ago, a couple weeks ago, and that there's some scientists, doctors thought that um, I've read that it, some people think it might have been some strain of something related to like Ebola or something very something like like really intense. Well, and I think I think that's um, I think that's wrong because yeah. because like like. It, like it's like somebody thinking something, but like there's not really that much proof. Proof, whereas there's more proof of of, of the fleas and all of that stuff. Um, so let's actually let's actually talk about like like um, like the situation right now. The reason folks think uh, the the situation right now is in like like in in 1347 in Sicily, right? Um, so a lot of folks think that the reason it might be something like Ebola or something much more virulent, uh, virulent, virulent, virulent um, is because it spread so quickly. But medieval hygiene, I think, right. can't be underrated in how like this spread, you know, like, like people lived in absolute filth and, and hygiene in, 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 in the East, you know, people bathed, People, people, um, uh, you know, people cleaned themselves, right? They, they, they changed clothes. But in Europe, they were filthy, 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 and they would crap on the streets. And I mean, it was bad, right? Right. Well, and they lived in uh, what was the name of their houses? Uh, Daub and something, which was basically a mud reinforced with animal feces. It's very strong, and it wasn't like filthy, dirty. It was like clean, but. Um, the thing I think we, we should really talk about, hygiene is a thing, but let's talk about what they were wearing. They were not wearing the comfortable cotton clothes that we all wear today. 
What are you talking you about, Dan? I have been to a Renaissance festival and I've seen the medieval clothes. <laughs> right. And it is they all were wearing these cotton. heavy wool tunics, right? Yeah. That were that and it was wet, you know. Uh, so like it's exactly where a flea's like, I mean, it's prime real estate for fleas. And if you don't really have a way of getting rid of it, like getting rid of fleas, like today, if if you have a flea, I thought I had a flea bite one time and I freaked out. <laughs> Did you freak out because of the black death? No, because it was a flea. Oh, okay. Like who has fleas? My brother's cat had fleas. And I know they, I know animals can get fleas. Yeah. But, you know, yeah, it, it, we go into the hygiene and what they were wearing didn't help the situation. And they didn't, you know, and people were poor. They had like maybe two, may, maybe two pairs of clothes. I think you're being kind. Yeah, I am. I, I am. I, I have friends in Europe who still only have one pair of clothes. <laughs> I was gonna say they turn it inside out when they want to change clothes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, oh, God, it's and 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 that's and and not just that, but there were also beliefs that that water had like was inhabited by 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 water demons. Right, and, right. And by fairies and sprites, and so so there was like no going into water, like like um well, because it was so dangerous, right? Sure, sure. So, you drink I water mean, and you get sick, right? You get you get you swallow a worm and it kills you, right? So so right. You, you only drink ale, and if if you drink it and it can kill you, you definitely don't want to bathe in it because you're you're probably it. So so there's there's all sorts of it makes sense in a medieval in a medieval context. But, yeah, it's a logical thing. Right, it's it's it is a logical thing, right? And I often think about that, and I often think about like like people romanticizing these places. And my only concern is body odor. Like like I'm just like I could not go back in time to a yeah. place where people really really stink. Yeah. So apparently, you have to go probably to the 1920s. Anytime before the 1920s, the world smelled terrible. God. That's what I've been told. <laughs> Well, that's when we had halitosis and deodorants and right, right, right. We started we started actually taking things, and it wasn't just chewing on a stick or um, or like pouring a bunch a of crazy powder stuff down over there. your head. Yeah, little yeah. exactly, exactly. Um, okay, so um, so we're talking about like really bad uh, bad um, hygiene, and so these ships roll into uh, into Sicily, which again. Super, like, what is up with Sicily, man? Like, what a what a place! It's magic. It's a magic spot because it. Everybody wanted a piece of it, and literally, almost every cultural civilization tried to come grab it, and they right. couldn't fight back. But they fought back, kind of with attitude. <laughs> Their attitude prevailed, even if the island was overtaken. But they were so disrespectful to everybody. <laughs> So you can imagine the plague rolling in there, and and you 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 have a lot of folks where where bravado, and and a little braggadocio might be might be part of a, the the cultural identity because at this point in time, uh, you know we're talking we're talking maybe three or four conquests in already of Sicily, right? Oh yeah, oh so, easy, yeah. right? So 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 we can guess that 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 cultural attitude already exists, and so they they come in and they're like, oh, what's going on here? Right and 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 there's they go into these ships, and there's all of these these um you know all of these people from the Crimea and they're all dead or dying right and so these ships sail into port right. and they're like hey and nobody answers and and people oh. immediately like rush in they're like oh empty ship let's go check it out right yeah. um and of course they touch everything right well and they. Well, they take it all with them, right? So, so a few right. things, right? They they probably went in, they probably touched everyone, they probably took the clothes of the people that were already dead because, like we said, like there was no, um, there was no, um, like clothing was was something that that there, there wasn't just a lot of. So, if you can increase your your shoes from like two wooden shoes to four wooden shoes or two wooden shoes and uh, two leather shoes or whatever, uh, you're already winning. Um, and so they take all of these clothes and all of these things that people have, um, have, uh, on them. Um, and, uh, and through a mixture, I would say, I would say that there's, there's a few important things here. Like I would say that blood 
it, was it a bloodborne virus? I feel like like that was, or or did blood I, attract the fleas and the fleas were still the ones spreading? That's why I've never been sure. Is it an it's is if it's an airborne virus or if it's from the actual bite of the flea? Well, so I think this gives us an opportunity to to listen to a uh, to talk to 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 listen to like a a to listen to to read out loud um, like a. Um, uh, uh, from the Decameron, and and this is Boccaccio, right? Who who was like, who became the Bo Boccaccio's Decameron is basically like a pseudo porn hentai like drawing, like <laughs> like, like graphic novel, right? Of of like like um, a bunch of young people who flee the cities uh, to go hang out and and in the countryside and 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 porn it up, right? Um, and so, and so the Decameron though, and I'm sure there's, there's going to be literary people and, and others who are going to, uh, uh, aren't going to be happy with my description of Boccaccio, but, uh, but the Decameron is actually like one of the more, uh, it's one of the most famous, um, sort of pieces of, 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 uh, of culture that came from this. Right. Um, and we can talk also about like the culture that came after it, but for now, let's, let's just kind of, I'll, I'll read this out loud. So. The sickness itself betrayed itself by the emergence of certain tumors in the groin or armpits, which grew about as large as a common apple, others as an egg. All right. So, yeah. So, so we're talking about like lumps in the, in the uh, lymph nodes is what I'm reading, right? Right. And, yeah. a, and, and a very specific lymph node. Armpits. Well, the, the pits and then down low. The groin. Oh. Yeah. 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 Um, so uh, in the groin or armpits, uh, right? And some which grew as large as an apple. So you can imagine like, like, yikes. Um, merely by speech or association with the sick was the disease communicated to the healthy. So that suggests, I mean, from our, from our way of thinking, it suggests that it might be airborne. Right, yeah, but it, a tick can jump six feet. There you go, oh. and that's or, I mean a flea. A flea, yeah. There you go. I learned that, that from my circus. <laughs> from your flea circus? Yes. You have a flea circus? No, but I actually worked on a flea circus. That's not a joke. Oh my god! All right, we'll 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 we'll, we'll, we'll do an episode in America. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on. <laughs> I, I don't know. If I, I'm, I wasn't ready for that. Um, I, 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 yeah, that stopped me in my tracks. <laughs> <laughs> That's the most shocking bit of evidence to come out of this whole. <laughs> <laughs> It'll make sense when I explain it. It's funny. Uh, okay. I, you're not going to explain it right now. So no, I won't keep that. Yeah. Um, okay. So, so yeah, that's a good point, Dan. And also, and I think the, the important line is this next one. It says, so communicated, uh, uh, Merely by speech or association by the sick was the disease communicated by the healthy. Any that touched the clothes of the sick seemed to catch the disease. Yeah. Many died daily or nightly in the public streets. Of many others who died at home, the departure was hardly observed by their neighbors until the stench, uh, until the stench of the bodies carried the news. Okay. So before we start talking about like massive deaths. I think I think it's safe to say that that clothes, that fleas, like it reads it reads to me like fleas is a very very possible like it it, it makes sense as a contagion, um, mm -hmm. and and folks who did not know any better like like carried those fleas from place to place, um, and so um, so it starts spreading right and um, and. It spreads really quickly, and it's pretty savage. I want to say that there's stories about people catching it in the day and being dead by the next day. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's there are stories that, like, within hours. Yeah. I, I just don't buy that. I mean, who knows? They, they might have had it for a while and just been, like, asymptomatic, and then it just came on. Right. Something we're learning about right now is like people right. who are asymptomatic and then suddenly like it kicks in and, and, and you're in the hospital. Uh, and, and so, 
Yeah, I, I think I think that's a likelihood. I think that's more likely than it being like like a weird strain or 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 proto Ebola or something like that. Like I think I think that that uh, from all of the stuff that we're talking about about like like how gross they were, um, and then the um, and then uh, and and the fleas and the changing of clothes and all of that stuff. It just seems like right. it was a perfect storm. Well, this brings me actually one thing that we need to talk about we, that we've totally spaced on this. Um, one of the biggest inhabitants of ships and one of the biggest culprits was, uh, I guess, the European black rat. Yes. Right? Yes. And so the rats got what they were on the ship and they, and the European black rat lives all over the old world. They're just not in Europe, right? Um, they were on the ships. They got off the ships, obviously. They got into well. They were probably these in communities. the food sacks, right? They were everywhere. Yeah, and so and they were in people's houses. Um, you know, if you ever lived in a bad apartment, even today we have rats. Uh, so the rats were everywhere. The rat, you know, the fleas were jumping from the rats to the pe- to the dogs to the people to the whatever. So the the rats are a big deal, and and going back into like probably wasn't like some weird strain of Ebola or something else was uh, the, the, where the plague started to die in Europe in the, in the late 17th century was when it really started to phase out and we, there hasn't like really returned at all. Right. They don't even have like very random cases. Whereas even in the Americas, like you hear about people that like get the bubonic plague after camping and you're just, what? Yeah. Yeah. That's the, right. There's the all- American West is, is it, the Western United States has, is one of the leading hotspots of plagues in the world. Interesting. But- and, and you'd think it'd be more virulent, but, but I think, but I think like to your point, like, like at some point the rats die at some point, the people die. Right. Um, and 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 the, it, and the fleas die and and suddenly like so the European brown rat made an appearance starting at the end of the 17th century and it's a larger rat and it may be more immune to the plague and it might be like a, a different type of black rat but it eats black rats Ooh. and so the black rat is not you don't it's very you, they're very rare you don't see them as much anymore in, in Europe, you see the typical brown rat that we're all used to. Interesting. So I, I have read that that's an interesting thing, that the emergence of the brown rat that eats the black rat and is a more like aggressive, like pushed it out of its habitats um, could have had a could have had a, a, a role in it. But we Got shouldn't it. forget the rat. We should not forget the rat. I think that's that's a really good point. And also, right. So the rats are basically like the like the like the speeder bikes of the, of the, of the, of the <laughs> fleas, right? They're like, right. right. The fleas are riding these rats into homes, into places where, where there are. And then people are carrying those fleas to other people. Right. And, and before you know it, like the contagion is everywhere. And I, and I, I want to, I wanted to show, um, I wanted to show this image here, which is horrifying. Um, and that is, um, that is from the, um, from the um, uh, the uh, temptation of Saint Anthony, which is which is a medieval painting. Um, uh, dang it! Hang on, need to forgot the name of the artist. Uh, Press, you got it. I'm typing away. All right, so Salvador yeah. Dali. No, no, no. <laughs> Oh, uh, wow. Temptation of St. Anthony. So, so the Temptation of St. Anthony, I just want to take a, a, a little moment in history. Um, uh, temptation of St. Anthony is one of the weirdest, uh, one of the weirdest and most popular things that, uh, that artists like to draw um, because it involves monsters and, 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 and harlots. Um, and so, and so there's a, there's, there's a lot of paintings out there of, uh, of, um, of, um, the uh, the temptation of Saint Anthony, but if you look at this particular image, um, there's the boils, right? The buboes that that gave name to the bubonic plague, um, and so um, and so you're looking here at at like those the boils and the black boils. There's one in particular that's just 
horrifying. It looks excruciating and the belly is swollen. And the mm -hmm. assumption there is that, that like all of these blood filled pus filled boils um, are, are, are basically what's expanding inside this poor, uh, poor person. So, um, so, I mean, you can imagine if this is an, if this is a somewhat mm -hmm. accurate depiction of what a, a plague victim looks like, um, it just swollen body, half naked, right? Because, because, Folks would be would be tearing at their clothes uh, um, as these as these painful blisters start uh, boils start uh, affecting their um, affecting them. Um, I think I think it's just a um, ha, Matthias Grunewald. That's the name. I, and I wanted to say Grunewald, but I I got nervous because I I was afraid that I was thinking Grindelwald, uh, and I didn't want it to be like a Harry Potter thing. Um, so, so I'm glad, I'm glad I, I figured that out. Um, but here, let, let me, let me actually upload here real quick. Uh, for those of you who are listening, um, uh, I would highly recommend you look up, uh, the temptation of, uh, of St. Anthony by Matthias Grunewald, um, because it is an amazing piece of art, um, that, there we go. Um, and I don't know if here, I'll hide my, uh, Wow. That's a good one. Some of those monsters look like they could have been in Labyrinth. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's got a Jim Henson feel to it here. <laughs> um so yeah, and we'll 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 make sure that we're uploading all of these images to the to the Facebook page uh for those of you who wanna who wanna check them out um uh and who are just listening to this on Spotify or uh Apple. Um, and a variety of other ones that I'm still not familiar with. Um, so anyway, um, to keep moving, right? Um, uh, so um, so people are having these boils and they're, they're I, I don't know what other better way to put it, they're dumb as bricks, right? Like these are not really well-educated people. Um, and, and as we've learned like now, like the less the less you are able to to think uh, rationally, and the more prone you are to doing really really dumb things. And I th I, I want to show one more illustration here of um of of panic, right? The kind of panic that that uh, that contemporaries drew of of uh, of what was happening with the bubonic plague, and it's, you look at it, and it's an army of skeletons coming off of, it looks like a ship, it might not be a ship, uh, with death riding a, a, a nasty looking horse, basically killing everybody, right? Mm. It looks, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a zombie apocalypse. Um, and that's what people were experiencing, right? Like from what, from what Boccaccio is saying, that like, like your next door neighbor might have died and you didn't realize it until you smelled it, right? Right. So, so you can imagine like the panic going there and people right now, like people right now, we're all panicking in very different ways. I think, I think we're all dealing with a, uh, with, with a certain amount of existential dread. Um, but like, I think, I think by and large, uh, our leadership and our, and, and, and our understanding of the world is such that, that it, pre it prevents us from going wild, but not so, not so uh, back in the Middle Ages. And so people started going nuts, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and well, and I think you wanna, mean, there were, when, when you hear about like there were piles of bodies, I, I, I really, there were like piles of bodies just in the streets. Like it looked and, more like a zombie apocalypse. It looked like The Walking Dead. Mm. Yeah. And, and, and because people couldn't bury them. And they, or they wouldn't touch them, right? And and they couldn't bury them quickly enough, right? And I think I think right. that that was an important part. And 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 so and so people people stayed indoors. But unlike here, like unlike what we're experiencing right now, we're all we're all stuck at home, right? We're all under quarantine. Um, but but uh, our our enemy, our 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 oh, I'm using the terminology. Um, but uh, like our um our, the illness we're dealing with right now isn't uh isn't something that is um uh isn't something that's being brought into our homes by rats and fleas right right and so even hiding out at home 
was was little to no use. Mm. Right. And I mean, so I was reading a thing on the on the bubonic plague. It's uh, untreated. It's an 80 percent, 80 percent fatality rate. Oof. Treated in 2020, it's still a 10 percent fatality rate. Oh, that thing still has legs after all this time. And you got to get it quick because like once it's sort of, I don't know, metastasize. Yeah. Once it spreads, basically, once you're it, done. Yeah. Because, because I think, I think part of the issue was that it, it sepsis, it created sepsis, yes. right? It creates a different one and a gang and a, you get gangrene. Yeah. If you look, I, if you look at pictures of people that get it, it, it's all, it's gangrene, all of your extremities, the lips, the fingertips. It's very ugly. Horrifying. So I'm, I'm, I put up another, uh, another image. And, and th again, that shows like the absolute panic and the, the horror that people were, were experiencing. This is uh, the image uh, is, is it's a woodcut of a skeleton signifying death walking out the door with a child. Um, and the parents are looking as the kid is kind of waving goodbye Right. Um, and, and, and again, it would like literally just like randomly walk in the door, take someone. And the thing about it is that we know that if, if one person in a household had it right, similar, similar to what we're working with right now, like mm -hmm. if one person in the household has it, there's a high likelihood that, that the entire household has it. Right. And that's right. why everybody goes, goes on two weeks worth of quarantine. Uh, right now. So, I mean, you can imagine like, like all of this stuff and then add to the filth, add to the panic, right? Add to that religion. <laughs> right. Right. And so, so like Dan, do you, do you, you want to give us like a, like kind of like a, a screenshot of what medieval religion might've been like? <laughs> uh, I mean, it was it was everything. Well, everything obviously everything was about the re religion, the day, the everything. Your whole day was based off of like religious things for the most part, and your month and your week and your calendar year was based off of all. So it was everything. And let's put it into perspective of this: you have no concept of of science as we understand it. Yeah, like basically, pretty much operating just above like sort of caveman, as yeah. in like every sort of natural event must have a supernatural explanation. Right, exactly. So, so like, why does the wind blow? Well, the little angels are singing, right? Um, right. Or, or why does you know, like all of it, all of it had some sort of like like religious meaning behind it, and so. What we're seeing is is let's talk a little bit about like like the because everyone in Europe at this point was Catholic, right? Like like we know we talked a little bit about that, but at this point the Catholic Church was also fraying, right? And and what we saw was was um, uh, during the the plague years was right in the heart of what is known as the 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 Great Schism. Right, the Great Western Schism, not the sorry, the Western Schism, which right. which is different than the Great Schism. The Great Schism is when the Orthodox Church and the Catholic Church split. Right. Um, but the the Western Schism is literally when uh, the King of France is like like uh, I don't like the Pope in Rome. I'm gonna I'm gonna set up my new Pope. Um, and then we had like like two pairs of popes like kind of like going at the same time. Right. So the Church is in disarray. Um, France is is pushing its power right over the church, um, and let me let me pull up the the notes here uh, because it bears doing. Um, uh, I don't know where I put it. Crap. Um, um, but basically, um, what we're looking at is the. Is this it? No. Shoot. All right. Um, basically, what we're looking at is the the um, the. Um, Catholic Church um, in a in a split um, is is it, it, it's losing its place, and the king of uh, the king of France is is enacting more power over the church. And so you're looking at people who believe the church is everything. Their calendar year is set up around the church. Uh, their 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 miserable lives are given meaning. They're like, ah, I'm I'm wallowing in shit, but 
at least I have heaven to go to, right? Um, and then, and then in the middle of all of this comes this death that is literally plucking children out of their parents' houses. And as the three of us like to say, panic erupted in the theater. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, 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 so this, so a weakened church, um, people being ravaged by, by disease, weakened centralized government, um, all of these things don't bode well. And so people start going crazy. And I think, I think nothing shows uh, more wildness than the flagellants, right? Yeah. And uh, we talked a little bit about uh, flag about the um, the heresies, and I feel like 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 flagellants were were kind of a, a spinoff of 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 these heresies, right? So, uh, either one of you want to describe flagellants? Uh, Go for it, Dan. Okay, uh, as I understand it, um, so this is about corporal punishment for yourself um mm -hmm. and I, i'm if i'm not mistaken these guys are still around they, to a degree. yeah i mean say that I don't, i'm not talking like practice. opus day or yeah no no like... <laughs> yeah don't get dan brown on me no, these guys are around don't get them yeah, yeah. right huh yeah. not not necessarily i wouldn't say that these i mean there are people who do corporal punishment still right in in like the philippines there's there's some very famous catholic folk who 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 do like corporal punishment some priests yeah. still do it i think and like, right. like really hardcore like religious folks still do it but this this in particular is 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 kind of a weird right. moment that had everything to do with the plague. So yeah, this was a this was a large religious order that 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 basically their claim to fame was processions in which they would like openly whip themselves as hard as they possibly could. As you can see in this picture, these people um, they have their hats and their hoods on. But and, but they are stripped down to basically their medieval underwear with no shirts on, and you can see the the god the third one in from the from the left is whipping himself, and the other ones are carrying whips, um, and so that's what it was also for them. But if I'm not mistaken, they were doing it for the community as well. Yeah, it was penance penance for the people. They were right. doing penance for the people. Right. Right. It was a very, I mean, it was a, it was, it was very Christian in that it was as Jesus took on the sins of the world, these guys were yeah. taking on the sins of the community. And, and, and to an extent, they thought that they were being protected, which like that, that doing this helped protect them from, from, uh, from, from the plague. Right. Um, and, and there is a, um, there's a, a, uh, a piece of writing about flagellants that talks about a group of about 600, right? So all men, all shirtless, all of them with these little whips that had like little, little, little metal pieces on the whips. Right. So to make sure that you bled, right? Weren't they like cats of nine tails? Yeah, yeah exactly. Kind of like that, but with little, little ones, right? Like mini, yeah. like personal, like, like personal pan pizzas, but like the, the personal, <laughs> like little, little mini, mini flails here. Um, and, and basically they'd smack themselves on the back and make themselves bleed, carrying the penance uh, from everyone. And, and you can imagine like 600 men and, and, and this, this, this thing from London says that 600 men from Flanders, which is across the ocean, right? Right. Walked into London, like okay. Let's let's say how many did they lose on the way over? Oh, um, right, yeah. right. Like like it was it was wild. So so these folks are are, are flagellating. They're um. They're uh they're they're doing all of these crazy things, and they're making themselves bleed. And right. what is attracted to blood? Please, right. please. It's like a buffet. Yeah. So, so these guys are going from village to village carrying penance on behalf of everyone, and uh, and what ends up happening is that they're 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 uh, they end up uh, helping spread the whole thing, right? Right? Um, and and so 
you know, that's just like one example of all of the, um, uh, all of, like the, the the insanity that was going on there. Um, and then on the rational side of things, right? Let's get rid of this picture of of of, of these folks. Um, on the rational side of things was the um, was the doctors. <sighs> um, and I think I think we've all got like a we've all got a, a vision of like what the plague doctor is, right? Like I think we've all we've all seen the 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 the, the visual of of the plague doctor, um, but um, of uh, and here I'll, I'll upload the uh, the plague doctor image here. Um, where are you, plague doctor? Sorry, guys. Like Venetian goth carnival. Yeah, it will. Dan, right. Dan's costume from earlier. Right. 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 Like that's that's, right. a, that's a plague doctor. Um, well, it was. I mean, it was the first hazmat suit. Yeah. Right. But 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 the truth is, this this specific hazmat suit didn't come around until the 1600s. Correct. Right. So this right. is this is 300 years after the plague that we're talking about. So. I mean, the, the 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 stupidity and the and the um and the like like ignorance it went beyond that. They felt that they were dealing with noxious vapors and something called miasma, right? Right. So and so like oh, it's a bad air. Um and and what does that even mean, right? Like oh, a bad a bad wind is blowing, and and I, I guess. It, it, from a from a scientific standpoint, it could come from like like living near swamps and swamps stink, and then people get sick near swamps. So the bad air must be what's causing it, right? And of course, like if you live in a filthy, filthy world, there's there's enough scents that are that are that are gross that you want to that you want to blame uh, 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 miasma and and noxious vapors, um, but. You know, the doctors would come in and 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 maybe treat people because at, at at a certain point in the plague, folks just ran away, right? Like people were ditching everybody, um, and um, and and you know, some people were making money kind of uh, by 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 doing running errands for plague victims or or taking care of plague victims, but inevitably those people would die. So people were having like 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 crazy orgies and there's there's stories of of just societal disarray right in a time where where orgy meant you were going to hell hell was a real place right you can imagine how how folks were 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 shaken to their core and into these come these 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 learned men these doctors who i'm sure in comparison to to you know the 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 shit eating peasant of of the middle ages were were learned but they had the most pathetic um, uh, uh, way of of, um, of treating people. So I'm going to read off some of these these treatments um, for 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 plague, uh, and 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 let's see if any of these like have any sort of like like scientific like, like can, can these actually work for for folks, right? So one of them was rubbing onions, herbs. Or a chopped up snake. So if you if you happen to not have rubbing on, uh, onions or herbs, but you do have a chopped up snake, you can substitute the chopped up snake for right. the onions and herbs. Uh, and you boil this on the boils, um, or you can cut up a pigeon and rub it over the infected body. And again, chopped up snake, pigeon equals blood, equals fleas, Ugh. equals more, right? Yeah. So I, I think the the rubbing on, onions and herbs maybe the the onions and herbs weren't that bad with the chopped up snake and the the pigeon like can you imagine being so desperate that you're rubbing a dead pigeon on your your bubonic plague No it sounds here's like a python so, sketch <laughs> <laughs> But the other thing we also have to remember is why we're dealing with bubonic plague we we've also got your 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 other run of the mill uh, terrible diseases. We've got tuberculosis. We've got giardia. All the other fun stuff that salmonella from rubbing poultry on yourself, like all sorts of other fun things. Right. That so you can you can aggravating the situation. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, clearly the chopped up snake is a symbolic gesture at best. Uh, oh, nice destroying call. Destroying the evil. I mean, it's, not, it's so similar to what a, a shaman would do in, in Native American 
tradition, you know. Right. It, it's purely symbolic at that point, but right. The You're... idea that we call pigeons the rats of the sky <laughs> kind of gives me a chuckle that they were trying to use that to cure themselves. That's right. so sad. And yeah, and you're you're kind of giving a life, like you're you're taking a life to try to save yours. I think is also kind of kind of interesting. Very pagan. Well, yeah, very I mean, pagan. That, okay, so <laughs> medieval culture still had a lot of pagan roots. Uh, you know, sort of the old European folk traditions were still in there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean from from the right. from the tribe. They, they were a decorative. While touch. we're talking, yeah. <laughs> while we're talking about uh medicines and treatments i want to tell you guys about some uh, treatment that i've actually i've smelled it um oh. it's called the seven thieves have either one of you ever heard of this no there so um uh it's it's most famous proprietor is from the santa maria uh, novella in florence the farm the famous pharmacy it's been there since like the 1600s um and it's this vinegar solution um that you smell um and uh it's supposed to ward off the the plague and disease but i also imagined it was for the smell like you see in cop shows you know where they put the stuff under their nose sure and and again back to everybody stinking right so let me read this to you this is from the website of the santa maria novella uh it's called aceto uh aromatico aromatic vinegar here we go this aromatic vinegar, traditionally known as the vinegar of the seven thieves, appeared in Toulouse during the terrible plague that, this is literally what it says, Toulouse during the terrible plague that smote the city between 1628 and 1631. Uh, according to legend, it was known as seven thieves, which each of which uh, was used by seven thieves, each, each of which knew one and only one of its components and enabled the thieves to steal from the ill without being infected. This remedy was spread on the hands and the face and burned in homes to prevent the spread of uh, communicable diseases. And it's still, it's still included in the traditional pharmacopoeia and is used in the tonic and air freshener. Warning, warning. Mm. This product is corrosive for oh. external use only, for smelling only, do not ingest, keep out of reach of children, <laughs> store tightly in a, clo in a cool place. Oh, that's amazing. Corrosive? I smelled it. It blew my head off. It it was it, you might as well have taken like I don't know wasabi and just shoved it up your nose. Wow, oh. it was crazy. So so that and and I think that actually goes to our next like um like our next um uh, bubonic plague like Black Death cure drinking vinegar. Yeah. So if you drink enough vinegar, you'll be fine. <laughs> you're, just gonna, you're just gonna have diarrhea and be miserable. Eating crushed minerals, which you know. Uh, uh, arsenic. <laughs> that was a classic. Arsenic. <laughs> ar arsenic, like ingesting arsenic and mercury. Good right. lord. Most of those things, like, lived on to like, like the twentieth century, I think. Yeah. Um, I, I, I am old enough to remember my parents putting mercure chrome on my cuts as a child. Oh wow. Mercure chrome is in my. You're body. what? Two hundred years old. <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, Cure Chrome was in this little brown bottle with a little eyedropper on it. And it was, when you applied it, it was orange. And when it dried, it turned pink on your skin. And wow. they would put wow. it over my cuts as a child. I am that work? Old. That's amazing. I'm still alive. I've still got all my fingers. But I wonder, I know that shit's in my system. <laughs> um, so, uh, and then the last thing that they, that they also did was uh, ingest 10-year-old treacle. Um, and I, I I don't treacle is like like molasses. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So ten year old so. molasses would have a bit of fermentation to it, and I think fermentation was a huge draw for these people as a as a, a natural corrosive. As right, right. So, so, right. So basically, like it got you a little drunk, and you felt a little bit better. Probably right. just raised your adrenaline. <laughs> 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 all right. So, uh, so we have also more, more things, um, sitting close to a fire or in a sewer to drive out the fever. Right. So if you've got, if you've got stink, uh, if you've got bad airs in you, if you've got miasma in you sitting next to a sewer, I assume would somehow, um, would somehow drive out the bad airs in you. 
Um, and the last part is fumigating the house with herbs, right? And that's what you right. were doing, Dan, earlier earlier when you when you showed up in your your yes. garden. Yeah, um, I was just I was just going down the list to to see what worked. Got it, got it. Um, so yeah, and it wasn't until uh, 1361 that uh, that it became um, that it became common for for doctors to actually burst the buboes, right? The 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 blisters. Uh, to right. help people heal, and that was part of like, like if you think about it, the the Black Death is 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 uh, from 1360, uh, 1347 uh, to 1353, and and probably that little that slight development in science of basically cutting out the the sores and and bursting off the right. pores helped relieve endless amounts of people and helped uh, helped cure folks. So it was it was a a, a pretty gnarly um, a pretty gnarly uh, uh, moment in time and 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 ultimately like like it affected a lot of folks. Um, I think one of the other things that that we're seeing now and I think like like it, that is that wears uh, that bears noting is uh, is how uh, how who people blamed for this, right? So. Um, you know, ignorance, um, religion, uh, panic, um, all of these things, and impending death, um, I'm sure basically make something like, like turbocharge things. And of course, um, if, the, if you're all Catholic and you have a group of, 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 uh, of other living in your area, uh, those others become uh, the, the 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 point of aggression and you start blaming them right and you see that that like like we're talking about like oh it started in China right now we're talking about it started in China and and we're desperate to prove the otherness of 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 uh, coronavirus right now of COVID nineteen uh, we're desperate to prove that right uh, during the Spanish influenza otherness it's 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 the Spanish that that brought this influenza right. Um, and I think I think that's a that's a a knee jerk reaction uh, like a like a, um, a a cultural thing that that we just do as humans and it takes a certain amount of enlightenment and a sort of sort of thinking to to get beyond that um, and I think that and and this had really terrible repercussions uh, during the plague uh, because the Jews were persecuted um, and and I think I think Muslims were as well like when you go into Italy and Spain uh, uh, you know. Uh, Spain was Muslim at this point in time, um, but um, but you look at these places and and the blaming of the Jews. I think uh, literally thousands of Jews, uh, if not more, uh, perished at the hands of uh, hands of people. I'm going to read this um, out loud about Jewish massacres during the plague. Uh, so the first one, Tulun, man, uh, uh, it, what a place, right? Because the, the there. Uh, was uh, the first one, the first massacre directly related to the plague. April of uh, 1348, Toulon, the Jewish quarter was sacked and 40 Jews were murdered in their home. Then in Barcelona um, in, in 1349, um, the Erfurt massacre, the Basel, ma Basel massacre, massacres in Aragon, Flanders, 2,000 Jews were, were, were burnt alive on Valentine's Day, 1349. Oh, wow. In right? Yeah, you just imagine, right? People around you are dying of plague, and the solution to that is burning two thousand people uh, in your city, right? So, like, like the, the, just just think about the psychological trauma that that has on on the on the folks in in um, you know, let's say your um, uh, your um, your family uh, lives in Strasbourg. And you're losing 80% of the population in Strasbourg to the plague. And in addition to that, you see 2,000 people burnt alive. Or you're a Jew with family in Strasbourg, and and they're burning your family alive, right? Like like there are there are um, oh sorry, but but in Strasbourg the the plague hadn't come to the city. They burnt the 2,000 Jews preemptively. It was oh, a awesome, right. <laughs> wow. Um, and, and while the ashes smoldered, Christian residents of Strasbourg sifted through and collected the values 
the valuable possession of Jews, uh, of the Jews that weren't burnt by the fire, right? Well, so, that's very convenient. Right. Yeah, that sounds about right. So, so we're seeing here that like, like the Jews as a, as a, um, as, as a people to, to blame, like this will obviously come back as recently as the 20th century, as we know, it's still happening right now, right? Blaming of folks. Um, but uh, let me just keep keep going through this because I wish Strasbourg was where it ended, but it didn't. Hundreds of Jewish communities destroyed it uh, during this period. Uh, um, 510 Jewish communities completely uh, annihilated. Some members killed themselves to avoid persecution. In spring of 1349, this Jewish community in Frankfurt was annihilated. Um, the destruction of Jewish communities in Mainz and Cologne. And now I do want to point out that a lot of these places are in Germany. Worth right? noting, it's the truth. Worth, worth noting, right? And 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 I think I think you know we can see anti-Semitism go uh, go uh, like across. Uh, it's not it's not a German thing, but it is worth noting that that uh, blaming of the Jews was particularly violent, even as far back as as the mid 1300s in Germany. And, and that is that is something that is super important for us to remember when we're looking at our recent past of World War II and seeing like how we, even today we're still dealing with this and how 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 we can manipulate these 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 fears that are well ingrained in us um, and and we can be manipulated by these things and by these like like cultural moments of of trauma. And and be and be manipulated by them to act a certain way nowadays, right? And so, so I think it bears noting that that what all of this craziness that we're talking about right now is still in how we think about plagues, and we are still to this day dealing with how how folks um, how we react to COVID nineteen has its roots on how we reacted very poorly uh, during during the Black Death. Um, so, uh, you know, in inspired Jewish corpses were disposed in wine casks and thrown into the Rhine, again, Germany. Um, by the close of 1349, pogroms uh, ended in the Rhine Rhineland, but then uh, other places in the Baltic coast and Eastern Europe started. And here's something that's also important to 20th, uh, to 20th century. Uh, Casimir III of Poland, is is one of the rulers that gets thumbs up during during the the Black Death. Not only did he close off the borders of Poland, preventing people from coming in early, very much like we did here in California. Um, you know, uh, we took precautions early here in California, and we're doing considerably better than say New York or Italy. Um, but um, but Casimir the Third of Poland, not only did he um, did he close off the borders? But he actually gave uh, refuge to Northern Europe's uh, Jewish population in Poland and Lithuania. Oh. And they remained there for the next six centuries. And that basically takes us from six centuries from 1351, from the mid 1300s, takes us directly into World War II. Right. So thanks to King Casimir III of Poland, there was large Jewish populations in, in Poland and Lithuania. And, and, and we know then what happened in World War II to those Jewish populations in, 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 uh, in Lithuania and Poland. And I think like, like we're looking at, at the Black Death and it seems so far away and yet still within living memory of, of, some, of some of the actions people took back then and and how they relate to twentieth uh, to the twentieth century, um, and and like to me that's just incredible, right? Like that's mm -hmm. just amazing mm -hmm. that we're able to to still touch that. If you have ever met a a Holocaust survivor from Poland, mm -hmm. they were in Poland because Casimir the Third during the plague allowed Jews into Poland. That's that's shocking. That's that's. Just, it's so close. It's so immediate. May I yeah. ask for clarification it's, on this statement, uh, on one thing? Sure. Uh, is, are you talking about St. Casimir as a Catholic? Yeah, so so that's interesting. <laughs> I, I just, I, you just popped my brain out. I was like, wait a minute. Yeah, a yeah. So Casimir the Third and the Poles were big Catholics, right? Like, like 
like a lot of Polish identity is around Catholicism. And you're correct. Yes. Here's the thing. <laughs> the motive for his actions are a little wishy-washy. Oh, no way. <laughs> but 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 there are there is there is um there are two things, right? And I think I think that there's the, the one is obvious that he was interested in tapping the economic potential of Jews, right? Um and the other one was he had a Jewish mistress. Hey <laughs> right. And so I think I think sex and, and money, two of the, the, the driving reasons for so much, um, uh, like it suddenly one reason to fight. Let's just say that. Yeah. So so um, just a really amazing like the story of the Jews during the Black Death uh, in and of itself is is it's a horrible tragedy and an antecedent to what we will replicate several times over over history and eventually. Uh, Landis Square in the 20th century, um, um, you know, and and how things uh, how things developed then. Um, so I want to kind of take a step back from all of this death, right? Um, I think I think uh, I think the uh, the Black Death um, uh, ended up killing. Uh, uh, I think it's a third. A third of the population could be. I might be being very conservative on that. Yeah, you. I, I think. I think. I think that's that could be right. Um, I've heard. I've heard. Um, I've heard. Uh, um, I've heard numbers as high as one third. Um, I've also heard uh, uh, three quarters, even right. Like like the but the but even even if it's one third, one in three people in, in the entire world dying of this, um, it results in in. In a new world, you can't go back to how things were uh, once once that happens. Right. Go for it, Dan. You, I think. Well, I think so you know, uh, you you have go with actual numbers here. Uh, anywhere from seventy-five to one hundred and twenty-five million people. Excuse me. Oh my. Um, killed throughout Eurasia, so Europe and and North Africa and the Middle East. Um, it's the most devastating plague in human history, pandemic in human history. So uh, you've got all of these people dead. Um, structures are weakened. Uh, the church is being called into question, right? Um, because I think even though you have all these different things happening in the church, helping people, you know, hospitals and stuff like that, <clears throat> I think people are, are starting to question the the power of the church, and so it societies are not society. Sorry, um, institutions are crumbling. Well, and, so, and, and, and again, like like the church isn't particularly strong during this period in time, right? We've got we've got two sets of popes. Right, they're constant. They're fighting it out to see who who's gonna who's gonna actually be the pope, right? So so like the church is frayed as it is during this moment. Right, right, and it's not really helping, right? Like like there's they they recently discovered uh, plague pits in uh, in in England. Right where like near near monasteries where literally like like the last guy like like buried himself right where right. Where, where where folks were so many people were 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 dying um, within monasteries and things so God wasn't really protecting you so it makes sense that God wasn't protecting you they don't have their stuff together they don't even know who the real Pope is right of these institutions are going to be uh, called into question and nobles are also dying. So, right. so you're looking at lineage and, and lines of, of succession being 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 shredded left and right. Right. So, I, I mean, I've always thought of plagues. Uh, they're basically like the wildfire of humanity, right? Yeah. So as Indeed. the fire burns out, whoever's left is left to pick through the ashes. So uh, as this is moving north and, I mean, this got way up almost to like the lap lens of, of like, of, of the Scandinavian countries. That's how far this went. Um, down in Italy, you've got the people that are left picking through the remnants and sort of starting to rebuild their societies. And it leads into, right, 
we've got the beginnings and the inklings of like, well, the old systems didn't work during the plague. Right. We're all that's left. We need to rebuild things. We need a rebirth. Right. And not, it wasn't that conscious of a thought, obviously. No, but, but, but it was it was a thing, right? That's like, what was going on. And it was happening socially, politically, rediscovering the, the ancient, you know, republics of Rome and Greece and and uh, sciences and old books and um, starting to question the church. Right. And, and, and what's interesting is so I think you hit on a, a really good point, right? Like like accessibility became a thing. Right. Right. Because because mm, tons of people are gone and, and all the people that own the books now, like, don't own so right. many. Books. Well, um, all I, those books are locked away in a monastery and now there's nobody in the monastery. Right. Right. Exactly. Um, so I wanted to read uh, read uh, just a, an interesting little thing about literacy, um, uh, how it in, how how literacy was affected by the plague. OK, so. You have all of these people are dying, and particularly in 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 uh, in um, in Italy, where they're not wearing the heavy wool as much as they are up, up north, right? But they're wearing uh, they're wearing linen, right? And so many people are dying that you have this giant pile of extra clothes, and people didn't want to go near the clothes uh, for a long time because. Because that's where people were getting sick from. So, so imagine just mountains of clothes that are that are that are um, that are gathering outside of town. And um, and what happened was, in in businessmen saw all of these rags of linen. They're like, you know what we can make from linen? Paper, and we can make paper that is cheaper than than parchment. Oh, and nice. so, yeah, and so what ends up happening is that the, the the parchment that was super expensive and made books uh, in the in the early to mid thirteenth century so ex expensive, it actually made it cheaper, and and an increase in the number of rags made paper more available, more paper, more books, more ideas, more more thinking happening, and and directly because so many people died, you have these rags that turned into paper that turned into books, right? right. And and that's a that's again like a direct line and and uh, if anybody if anybody out there knows um, uh, connections uh, which is James Burke's uh, incredible and important series on the history of science I would highly recommend you guys go check out um, check out uh, um, that series and he talks about about uh, how uh, how scientific discovery to this day can be can be all can be followed back to the bur the burst of information that happened from all of the books that were printed on all of the paper that came from all of the rags that came from the bubonic plague um, that's great think, like that's yeah cool. i didn't know that yeah um and and but the, but so books wasn't wasn't the only thing that was going down um um the um obviously art Kind of took a took a took a serious turn to the to the to the more interesting. I mean, if you look at medieval art, it's all very like right. Uh, and and art started expanding. Also, music started expanding. And I think right. um, I want to I want to play a little bit of of uh, so music in the medieval world is like basically like like you know like like oh here's a here's a folk tune on a on a little whistle it's, right it's like, a sound version of the visual arts yes exactly it's just and, a very two dimensional yeah yeah exactly <laughs> yeah or gregorian chants right like oh, 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 oh. <laughs> right? right it's pretty but it's very simple very simple right <laughs> and what came out of the middle ages was was these these um two things um the, the rise of more complex music and the rise of secular music, right? So, so suddenly, like the, the 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 papacy after all of this, the papacy is 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 in tatters, and God kind of abandoned everyone. So maybe you just want to write a song about the people around you or about like something fun. So what you do is you just you you just kind of start like oh, okay like like modern song composing not for God and not for like 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 
you know, like troubadour kind of thing, but just like modern, the the, the burgeoning of music as we know it uh, right. kind of took off after this. I'm going to, I'm going to play one of these awesome head banging tombs uh -huh. uh, from, from that, that stemmed from the, um, from the, um, um, from the post uh, black death period. Oh, okay. a good one. yeah, it's a, it's, it's a crowd pleaser. Um, I remember but, when they opened up with that one. The crowd yeah. was just going. <laughs> it's it's um, number one with a bubonic bullet. <laughs> yeah. And, and the name of it is, is uh, no more than one man could count the stars. And the composer is Guillaume de Mochot. Um, and it is courtly love, right? So it's no, 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 no. It's a little bit like it's a little bit like 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 pining for love and all of that kind of stuff. Um, you did not let your kids listen to that stuff. Yeah, no, <laughs> definitely. Yeah, definitely. What you really didn't let your kids do is is read the Boccaccio by uh, the 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 uh, Boccaccio. The I'm not sure. I, I would still today. Right. Right. Agreed. Agreed. Very very randy. Um, let me let me just really quickly um, let me just really quickly talk about uh, the Decameron. I just think it's important. Uh, Thirteen fifty three, which puts us uh, which puts us right at the end of the plague, is when when it came out, right? Um, and it has a hundred erotic tales told by a group of seven young women and three young men. Those are good odds. Um, <laughs> uh, actually, you know, if you take, anyway, um, young men, uh, sheltering in a secluded villa just outside of Florence to escape the black death, which was afflicting the city. So you can imagine this is the first, like, this is, this is, this is a raunchy story complete with wood carvings, uh, about, about like, like young people, uh, partying in a secluded villa while everybody else is dying. I think, um. It has good descriptions of of the Black Death, so there's you know you can you can assume that there's going to be uh, good descriptions of everything. So uh, uh, assigned reading uh, 1353 Hentai by Boccaccio. Um, uh, I'm telling you, in ten years, there's going to be a modern remake of this about mm -hmm. today. Oh yeah, uh, no joke. I I think that is actually going to happen. Because we've never yeah. needed to reproduce in order to save humanity. You, us as in like modern folks. I think we're good, you guys. I think, yeah, I no, think we're full. We're definitely full. But I can see the appeal in getting people all randied up in case you needed to make more. Uh, sure. Repopulation. You got to reboost the population. Right. Well, I was thinking like just a good movie. Just the return of the teen, of the teen sex romp. Oh wow, Porkies! Oh, just, please no. Porkies for beginners. Oh, oh no. boy! All right, and I think, and I think on that note, um, we can we can kind of step away from the uh, uh, step away from the from the Black Plague um, because I think it, it, we this conversation led us through all of it, and it's well beyond an hour. We're at an hour and a half, and and some. Oh change. wow! Yeah, but I mean. It didn't didn't drag for me, and I hope it doesn't drag for the folks at home. Um, but I did want to I did want to get uh, get a chance uh, for Dan and I and Brassy. Um, you know, in in the future, I I, I maybe didn't give you a heads up, or or you want to send something in for uh, for show and tell. The we saved the last uh, the last moment or so of our um, of our um, of the whole thing for a little bit of show and tell. Um, and, uh, and I think, uh, oh, you know what, before we do show and tell here, uh, let me add, a, let's just take another look at some of the, um, at some of the, the, the costumes of, uh, of the, of plague doctors through the ages, because I think it, it also bears noting, um, that, um, that, um, uh, that these, um, Shoot, I just lost it. Um, here we go. Hang on, you guys. Um, that the costume, the costume with the beak, um, is is actually uh, that has followed us uh, for for uh, for centuries, really. Um, and and that that um, um, 
Uh, crap. I mean, let's be honest. It's probably top three masks in history. Oh, yeah. Michael Myers, Plague Doctor. <laughs> uh, Jim Carrey. But what was that? Jim Carrey. I'm just Jim kidding. Carrey. Sure. No, no, no. No, no, no. The classic 1950s Frankenstein. Right. What about Phantom of the Opera? What do you think about oh, that? There, nice work. There you go. Okay. The half mask. Yeah. Which and, was scarier and, than the whole mask. I don't know Right. How. Especially when it's set into the burned skin. Ah. And y'all remember uh, Phantom of the Paradise? Prime right. the Palma film, Phantom of the Paradise? Uh, classic. Classic Paul mask. Williams, great vehicle for old Polly Williams. Uh, that mask scared the crap out of me. Really? The, yeah. the, the mask? That the phantom mask in that movie really hit a nerve in me somehow. I think it because it's metal. Interesting. Yeah. Oh. Um, so I'm going to show one, uh, a, a mask here from um, if it ever uploads. I'm going to show a couple of masks here um, from. Um, is it is it the steampunk version? No, it's not the steampunk. Oh, thank you. For so the plague mask, the beak. You would stuff with the earth, right? So, so you smelled, right? and that was, and the mask was a full hood, apparently. Oh, uh, yeah. Could you imagine? So, w one of the symptoms of bubonic plague is delirium, mm -hmm. and then that comes into your room. Sure. Why not? Trip me out. Just give me the arsenic. All yeah. Yeah. Where's the mercury? I need help. <laughs> Let's get out of here. <laughs> and, I want a, an another simulation. Thing. <laughs> About, um, so after the bubonic plague, they started making ships stay out in harbor, right? Before they could come in. Mm. And that's, uh, and, and, and in Venice, they have all these little islands where they have what they call the lazarettos, where they put plague victims from later plague things, right? Mm. We have a lazaretto here in the United States. Oh, it's a oh. national park in New York. <gasps> that's what it is. Oh, my. Think about what Staten Island is. That's or not set. <laughs> think about Whoa! what Staten Island. Is. I mean, <laughs> think about what Ellis Island is. Well, you're gonna have New York swinging in the air for that. Okay. Oh so, my gosh. So I, I think I think uh, Dan, it's important also to note, like the beak and the herbs on the nose, um, that persists, right? And the the idea that that will help somehow uh, is it, it was the design around that and the thinking around that also helped uh, helped create like current gas masks. And I want to show uh, the look, I want to show you guys a picture of a plague doctor during the Spanish influenza. Go like this so that your brains don't fucking explode. Uh -oh. All right. No. <gasps> oh, no. That looks like an elephant. You. Oh, no, thank you. Yeah, that's... Right? Oh. Now, do you see what the stick is for? The stick is to point out and to move people. Yep. Oh. Yep. And there's there's actually pictures of of uh, of undertakers uh, with the bubonic plague moving people with sticks like that, like off the cart, like literally sticking the sticks into the mouths and moving them. Right. Off oh the my cart. gosh! Very similar so, to the way I'm getting groceries delivered right now. I just use a stick. Well, you know, as we're as we're winding down here, there's. Uh, Two, th two things about the plague I want to talk about. One of them, I don't know, I think it's kind of a sad story, but there was of two villages, apparently. One was okay. One was totally devastated and had locked itself down. And the other village would, like, push food out halfway into the meadow for these people and then run away. And then they would come out in the middle of the night and get the food and go back to their quarantine. But then they would leave their they would leave their dead like a little bit closer to the village and the other village had dug pits and they had like these 40 foot hooks that they would drag their villagers from next door into these pits and then they would bury them for them. It's gross, but it's kind of like sad, bittersweet, doing the best you can, I guess, sort of thing. Symbiotic second thing, survival. Yeah. Second one. They had to put guards at the burial pits because people would try to bury themselves. Oh. Right, like what I was saying. Right, as they were dying, because they would go delirious, and they would try to jump into the burial pits, 
and the burial pits had to stop at six feet below below level. And third, if you got walled up in your house, you got a guard 24 hours a day to make sure you didn't escape. Sometimes you could bribe them, sometimes you could trick them, but if that didn't work, the ingenious people of London threw a barrel of lit gunpowder down on one one time oh. and blew up their guard. Damn. All right. Desperation. Nice. Undoubtedly okay. my answer. So let's yeah. do tell <laughs> Dan real quick. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna upload some some pictures that you sent me and you kind of kind of okay. walk uh, walk through them. Okay. So the first one is uh, is this one that I stuff is taking forever to upload and I apologize, you guys. Um, that's all right. Uh, that's so I'll I'll preface what we're gonna see. Um, so uh, throughout uh, Central Europe, there are plague monuments. These are not to the Black Death. These are to a later plague down the road. Uh -huh. um, and cities built these monuments uh, in honor of the dead and then a sort of glory to God for saving the city. And they're all, they're very Baroque and strange. Um, so when it loads... Yeah, it's it's not it's not loading. So just talk about them. <laughs> okay, so they're just uh, if you ever get a chance, uh, the the coolest one get online is look up Vienna's, because that's like the mother the mothership of plague monuments. Um, and then there's a particular part where there's a there's a relief on it that is uh, a young woman holding a cross, an angel, and an old like zombie woman, and that oh. is the city of Vienna praying to God, being answered, and the angel smiting plague and it's one of the most terrifying uh pieces of sculpture i've ever seen and i, I it's worth noting that plague was re represented as an old woman yes yes that is something to to and not just any like zombie old woman yeah um but they're all over the, even the smallest villages have like very like just small small ones and they're fascinating um and then venice did they went with a full church the salute, the, oh. the famous dome. They they weren't even messing with the monuments. They went with the full, we're doing a full church if you get us out of this. So they're very cool. Uh, they're interesting pieces of Baroque art. So if you're into Baroque sculpture, check them out. That's interesting. Tell. That's good. Yeah, I, I have not, you know, and, and it's funny, like like you see these little snippets of of, of plague in Europe and 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 just to just to reiterate though the, the spots that you're talking about those are those are monuments to to the survival of other plagues because right. the, the black death killed everyone there was no right. survival of that right. plague Every this is a later death. thing this is a later thing but i did find an interesting thing this is still considered the same pandemic so the black death is a part of a much larger problem you know, that would, that, that, that was the biggest. It would do the waves, which is right. also what we're talking about right now. Right. right. We all want to get out of here, like in, 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 at least in June. And they're saying, well, if we get out in June, then we're going to be dealing with this in October. So do you want, do you want 4th of July or do you want, uh, do you want Halloween? Right. Right. I want both. Um, all right. So, so uh, applicable to our, to our costuming and all, all our, our, um, all our, uh, our garb and all of the stuff, um, you know, here at, at, at our house at, at Santo Poco, we, 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 um, we disinfect our, our mail as it comes in. Um, we're, we're being very careful about like packages because a, I, I, we're getting all of our groceries delivered through, through, through magic because I don't think like most places are doing delivery and we've just been able to, 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 to patch like meals together, um, but but I'm I, at one point the conversation was had internally that Alf, you should get some gloves. Oh so, boy! <laughs> oh, I can't wait. And so and so my oh, my get ready, Dan. So oh, I was just like, oh well, you know, I'll definitely need gloves that you know that will protect me from you know at least at least you know up up a ways because. Because who needs these these little gloves that that? Right. So I took the advantage. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I knew that's where we were. Heading. You knew that was yeah. I mean, 
you know, th they protect all the way here. And sure, leather holds uh, holds uh, a certain amount of, of bacteria in it, and I have to disinfect them every time I use it. And I'm probably spreading uh, COVID-19 from the packages to the rest of my house by using these gloves. But also, how could I say no to cavalry gauntlets? Right. You just can't. Look at those right. suckers. Really, Amazing. and I can, and I, I, I can see the justification of, to the misses. Well, obviously, I can use them when this is all over. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. This is a smart purchase. It is because we will be riding back to riding horses uh, and cavalry when by the time this is all done. So, so I think, I think, I think it was a good purchase. And honestly, the other good thing about it is that I can just wave it off. <laughs> Right. And, right. and I have to not have to not have to touch the actual places that made contact with the surface. Nice, right. nice purchase. Thank you. Thank you. Um, well, I think that kind of concludes uh, uh, today's stuff. Anything anybody want to add? Brass, do you want to add anything? Uh, any 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 knowledge that you want to impart on us uh, since since maybe you didn't bring in a, a, a piece? I didn't something. bring a show and tell, but I, I would love to share one small snippet of history. Um, Native American tradition, the Kiowa, the Kiowa tribe, when they first encountered smallpox and they knew that this was could be the end of their civilization as they know it, their legend, the Kiowa legend, is that their trickster god went out to talk to the smallpox man to man, mano a mano, face to face. And he said, you know what? I see you're in the Kiowa system. What I would recommend to you is move on to a bigger tribe. We got an enemy tribe just over the hill. They're going to be delicious. Why don't you leave us alone? We're too small and pitiful. We can't really, we can't really satisfy you. So smallpox, I invite you to go visit our, our enemy tribe across the way. It could be the Seneca. I think he set them on the Seneca. <laughs> and the Kiowa people were indeed saved by the smallpox. Oh, wow. That so, is interesting. And with, with are the it's Seneca? It's a legend. Now, and again, we're talking about invisible airborne plague we're talking about airborne virus uh we can avoid blood i do a good job of avoiding blood in my day-to-day -day life i can avoid dirty water but i cannot avoid air and right. that's where belief the, the belief in the invisible and having faith in the invisible really get, gets us blurred between <laughs> a pagan faith and hard science and we're, I feel yeah. like we're teetering on the edge of, of pagan belief and hard science right now. People are saging their apartments for COVID-19. Come on now. I mean, you know, and, 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 and how is that and how is that different than 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 the the, the medieval uh, posies. The medieval viewers, you know? posies. We're putting posies in a mask. Oh, yeah. Ring around. Right. The I was wondering yeah. when we we're going to get to this. Well, let's get to it. Who wants to handle that? Well, we're Go not going to sing it, are we? <laughs> no. Uh, one of the most famous things left over from the plague is the children's nursery rhyme, Ring Around the Rosie. Yeah. Pockets full of posy. Ashes, ashes, we all fall down. It's really a dark Because the plague song. knocked us down. Yeah. The plague knocked you down. Right. Right. And I imagine, I don't know if, if uh, medieval Britons were into this, but I, I would think that instead of just burying the bodies as is, they should have burnt them, no? They did. They oh, started, okay. I mean, okay. that's where I think cremation became more acceptable in sort of Western culture was, was through it all, right? If you think about it, the nursery rhyme, it's as dark as that thing they sang in Nightmare on Elm Street. One, oh, two, yeah. three coming for you. Right? Like, it's so, so dark. Let's, let's real quickly, before before this all ends, let's dissect Ring Around the Rosies. Ring Around the Rosies. Um, is the scarlet ring that would show up. Around the Rosies, right? Around the, 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 the twigs and berries. Right? Oh, and then God. Right, right. Pocket full of posies would be the, the, the blisters, the boobos that, that... Was it? I don't know. That's what I think. I thought, oh, I thought medicine, they carried around pockets, flowers in their pockets. Oh, there you go. There you off. go. Yeah. Okay. And then ashes, ashes, we burn all the bodies. See, I thought ashes, ashes was was uh, was hinting at, at sneezing and coughing. Ah, uh, I don't and know. Then, and so you cough and then you die. You all fall down. Right. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's so, it's like a, it's like, it's like a, it's like, yeah, it's the thing from Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah. Horrifying. 
but or, with a higher mortality rate because even Freddie let some people go. Right. If you could wake up, you were fine. Yeah. Wow. Amazing. All right, okay. guys. Well, I have one more thing. Oh, what the is reading? Your... Oh, okay. If anyone's interested in reading. Journal okay. of a Plague Year. Kemu, the plague. Yes. Love in a time of cholera. Oh yes. Came there you go. Cholera. Solid books. All right, you guys. Uh, I'd play us out, but I also managed to mess up that part of the tech. As you know, this is all a work in progress. This has been the history happy almost two and a half hours. Uh, so we may <laughs> spread this apart. Um, but I am Alf Lamont. I'm Dan. Ding and on. I'm See Amanda Brass. And, and this has been episode two, Plagues. Thank you all so much. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Bye. Be safe.